Hey guys, this is the hike to Clouds Rest, which is here. You can see the views are pretty incredible. That's Half Dome, Yosemite Valley down there. And it's a beautiful hike, especially if you don't get a Half Dome permit and you want to do a bucket list hike here in Yosemite through Clouds Rest. It's a popular hike and it's beautiful. The views are panoramic and uh, cannot be beat. Now, if you want to do the hike, there's one part at the end that's a little bit narrow. I'll show you what that looks like. Some people have a scared of uh, fear of heights, might have a hard time with it. But otherwise, it's uh, just under 13 miles or so round trip. And you know, you have your climbing like you do with most hikes in Yosemite, but it's uh, it's definitely doable for most folks. Now, if you want to do it, just go to hikingguide.com where I have a full guide with parking and permits. You don't need a permit actually, but everything you need to know to do the hike, maps, that you need maps. Uh, but otherwise, here are the video turn-by-turn -turn directions. Okay, so the hike starts at the Sunrise Lakes Trailhead. Now, it can get busy because you have people going to uh, Tanaya Lake, which is right by here, and you also have people doing backcountry trips. So uh, if you can't park there, you can park along the road, and I have all the information on the article or in the article. Here's our first trail sign. It says Clouds Rest. Now, these trail signs are not entirely correct. Uh, they don't jibe with my GPS and a lot of other people's GPS, so just beware. At this first intersection, we're going to go straight. There's a trail off to the left to Tanaya Lake. There's a loop trail around Tanaya Lake, which is pretty nice. If you want to try that, it's pretty easy. Basically, just walk around the lake, but it is beautiful. But we're going to go straight, head towards Clouds Rest, and here we're going to cross Tanaya Creek. Now, in the spring, this can be underwater. Um, most of the summer, it's just like this, and it's probably dry later in the summer or in the fall. Um, but just a heads up, you're going to want some good footwear on this hike, and I have some gear recommendations in the article for you. And once we cross here, there's another trail off to the left going to the Tanaya Lake Loop Trail, which we're not going to do today. We're going to go straight, and you can see there's another sign here. The trail is very well marked. It's well maintained. It's one of the most popular trails here in the park, so uh, you don't have to really worry about losing the trail much. And then at this last uh, turn off to the lake, we're going to go straight once again. Now you have about a mile of uh, level flat. There's the incorrect trail sign. A level flat uh, trail before you start climbing, which is nice. And this isn't just a big climb to the um, to Clouds Rest. You're going to have some ups and downs along the way, so sometimes it makes it harder. But in this beginning part, just enjoy the flat section, which you can see here. And then you start to go up. Now this first climb, the good and bad news is that it's the hardest climb of the day for most people, especially if you're not used to the altitude. It can be really tough uh, and it's steep and it's rocky. So again, having good footwear here will help. And this gives you an idea of how rocky it can get here. Uh, you're going to climb about a thousand feet in a mile, which is pretty pretty tough, pretty aggressive. But once you get over this, you have another climb up to the final push uh, to the summit, but it's not as tough as this one for most, most folks, including myself. And you can see here, it's rocky, it's steep, it's a tough one. We're gonna continue to go up, and then when we get to the summit, there is a trail off to the left uh, to the actual Sunrise Lakes, but we're gonna go straight here. There's the trail off to the left. We're going to go straight. We're actually going to have a downhill, and then there's going to be another flat section before we climb again. Now, a lot of people think the big mountain up to the left is um, Clouds Rest. It's not. It's actually Sunrise Mountain back there, so you're not going to climb there. We're going to kind of bear off to the right um, and go go on a flat trail for a while. But first, we have this nice downhill, which, of course, you have to climb once again when you come back. That's how it goes. Pretty soon we come down to the level part. You can see it's pretty lush. There's a lot of water crossings. If you are uh, bringing water, bring a filter to refill. There's certainly plenty of places most of the time here to get water. And one of my favorite spots in this section is this uh, seasonal pond that you come to. I've always seen it with water. I haven't been here super late in the season. I imagine it gets dry at some point, but it's always pretty nice. And you have about probably a little mile or so, a little over a mile of this flat. There's some little ups and downs as you go in this middle section. But soon you're going to get an uphill again and it gets rocky. Now the good news about the uphill portion from here to the summit of Clouds Rest is it's kind of uh, 
there's some ups and downs. It's not one big steep climb um, like most of the hikes in Yosemite. So we're just going to climb up for a bit. And eventually you're going to come to the pack trail, which is off to the left here. We're going to go straight and a sign once again says clouds rest. The distance is a little bit longer than it actually is. Um, so, or my GPS could be wrong, but anyway, we're going to go straight here and you're going to have this kind of gradual uphill, big sandy trail. That's clouds rest off to the left there, which you'll be able to see not too much farther at this point. And the nice thing, uh, at least in this direction, is that right after this little climb here, you're going to have a downhill section to the saddle before you start climbing the spine, the exposed part, over to Clouds Rest. I'll talk about that in a second, but at the bottom of this hill, the trail kind of dead ends or makes a hard left, depending on how you're looking at it, at the ridge. And you can see here, this is the start of the spine up to Clouds Rest. Now, if you have a fear of heights, this section could be bad. It's nothing like Half Dome. It's not even close to Half Dome in terms of being scary. And I've taken friends who were scared of heights on this um, before. So if they can do it, you can certainly do it. But you can see how wide it is. It's generally pretty wide. There's no narrow edges where you might fall off the side. Um, there are some tips. So if you go to the website, I have a whole section on navigating this part of the trail with some tips and tricks. But you can see here, I'm going up kind of a wide section. It's probably 40, 50 feet wide at this point. And eventually you're gonna to come to this trail sign. And between here and the summit, there's a narrower section, which, I don't know, it might be 15, 20 feet wide, but the trick is to stay to the left here. Both sides have a steep fall, but the immediate fall is on the right side. And if you go along the very top of the spine on the right side, it gets to be like three or four feet. But if you kind of cheat over onto the left side, you go just a little below the spine here. And you'll be able to see people's footprints and worn rock here, but you can kind of go up along here and it's not on the edge and the drop on the left hand side even though in this shot it looks a little extreme is nowhere near as um, extreme as it is on the right hand side so you can see i'm going up here you can also see footprints and a well-worn path there through the sand and the granite as we go up and if you go up this side too you'll notice that people have built little stones um, but as long as you stay on this side, you should be uh, you should be fine. There aren't deaths here like there are on Half Dome, um, and if it's windy or you get scared, you can just kind of crawl along. But you can see here we've passed the narrowest point, and we're coming up to the summit. You'll be able to see Half Dome down there to the right, and you can see how wide it is as we approach the summit. And the summit's really wide; it's not like a knife edge or anything like that. Um, you know, people. You could probably pitch tents here even though you're not allowed to, um, but it's nice and wide. And then once you get to the top, this is the summit, and you'll have these incredible panoramic views. You're a thousand feet above Half Dome, which is straight ahead there. You can actually see the groove and the people walking up the cables on Half Dome. But you'll be able to see all the high peaks, Mount Clark, all of the um, peaks along Tioga Road up there. The spine once again and then down into Yosemite Valley so it's really really beautiful good place to stop take your bearings have a snack and then when you go back you're just gonna head back down the way you came um, and actually when you do the the spine going down this way it looks worse and you know this is shot on a camera that has a little curvature in the lens so it looks a little more extreme in this picture but it's really not that bad when you're there um, but you just go back down the way you came and that's the hike so that's Clouds Rest. Beautiful, beautiful hike. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, the directions and maps and parking and all that info is right underneath the video. The link there in the description. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, if you give me a little thumbs up, it's an easy way to say thank you. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. So Clouds Rest, you got to do it at least once. It's definitely a bucket's, re bucket, uh, bucket's Rest. Bucket List Hike. The views are incredible. I'm not even on top, and here are the views.